and thank you for joining my channel. This is my homeschool journey with my six-year-old twins and my eight-year-old twins. And I have to tell you, I meant to say this in my gather round video and I forgot, I will be changing my name. And I'm not gonna say what that is yet, but because I just wanna make sure that that is 100%. But I do wanna let you know that that's gonna happen. So if for some reason you're watching a video later on and you think, wait, what did she just say? <laughs> yes, I did change my name. I will let you know when that is going to happen and what the name is when I'm just a completely 100% on it. But I just wanted to let you know. If you're new here, sorry for that confusion. I would love for you to stick around and subscribe, hit the bell, that'll let you know when my next videos come out. Give me a thumbs up, that really helps my video to be seen. And this video is going to be on the math curriculum that we're using. Right now I'm trying to go through and show you in separate videos all of the curriculum that we're using. This particular one is on Masterbooks math, math lessons for a living education. I feel like there's some controversy around um, Masterbooks math with a lot of people saying it's not enough, it's too easy. And I was watching a video, I think it might've been Rebecca Spooner's where she made a really good point. And I will try to summarize her point, but it probably won't come out as great as she made it sound. <laughs> But if you want to check out that video, it's if you type in uh, Rebecca Spooner math review or something like that. Anyway, she says that if you look at the scope and sequence at the end of the elementary years, master books lines up with the other math curriculums. So if we all are at the same point, roughly, at the end of the elementary years... The reason why master books can seem behind or too easy is because they really want to approach it in a very gentle way as the child is younger and then speed it up throughout the um, kind of mid and higher elementary years when you're ready to take on more work, when you're able to sit longer, when you're ready to do more mental math in your head. But in the very beginning, they just want you to flow into it and not feel overwhelmed because there's nothing more sad. I mean, yes, there's many more, more sad things, but there's, but it's so sad to see a child stressing over anything, but to stress over math and already at the ripe age of five or six, be stressed out about math. Think about that. If you're homeschooling, your child shouldn't be stressed about anything having to do with school. That's why we're homeschooled. That's one of the reasons why we're homeschooling because I don't want to see them stressed out about academics and testing and feeling behind or not understanding. And so why I really love Masterbooks is that it starts out very gentle and very, and it just kind of eases you into it. It lets you see how you're using math in an applicable way in your life, in the life around you. And then I would say probably at about level three from what I could see from the books, it starts to pick up. But by then you are what, maybe eight, nine years old roughly, and you're able to do more. You're able to comprehend more. Now, obviously you may have some, you know, little math wizards. I have one myself, but I'm still choosing to keep him at a level two and just move through the levels. He can do way more advanced math problems, but you know what? Right now, I don't wanna push him. So what I wanna just say real quick before I show the books is um, go online to Masterbooks and take the placement test. If you click on, let's say the level one, I believe if you click on the level one book and you scroll down, you'll see a placement test, click that. And it's basically questions. It's nothing that you physically have to click or whatever to take a test and get an answer. Um, you can print it out and you know go over it with your kid or you can answer for your kid if you know how much they know. And that will let you know which level to go in. So, so it says levels, but don't take that as grades. So let's say your kid's going into second grade. That doesn't necessarily mean you need level two. That just means that's the level two math. Maybe your child is going into grade two, but they need level three math or level four math, depending on the placement test. 
So try not to think of level as grade. Just think of it as levels. There's also a great community, Moms of Masterbooks on Facebook, and uh, you can ask any Masterbooks related question there. So I started, this one is Math K. They did not have this when my older twins were little. I got this for my little twins because they wanted to do something while my older ones were doing school last year. This is from last year when they technically weren't even doing school. They are six now and they're in kind of a kindergarten first-ish I don't know. It's really hard to do grades when you're homeschooling. Um, <laughs> but this one I would say was definitely on the easier side for them, but I didn't care because, because it was simple for them. They wanted to do it and they did it on their own and they did it consistently and they finished the book and they didn't need a lot of help from me, but it definitely brushed up some of their basic skills, especially writing the numbers. And this is a pretty thick book. I think this might be one of the thickest one. Everything is in color and they are working on their numbers, writing their numbers and simple counting, simple shapes. A lot of people say that they could use this with their four-year-olds and maybe you could, that's fine. But again, I chose to do it with my five-year-olds and they were able to do all of it on their own. I just had to read them the instructions and they were able to do it. There's always a story at the beginning of each lesson about Charlie and Charlotte, who are twin brothers and sisters, so it works perfectly for us. And there's a little story about how the math that they're about to learn applies to their actual, actual life. And the scope, I'll show you the scope and the sequence for this so you can see that they are counting from lesson one they're counting to five and then learning about different shapes then they're learning opposites and symmetry they're using they're learning some cooking and measuring skills they're learning a number of the week so they go all the way up to 10 through this book counting and comparisons they're doing more or less completing the sequence. They're doing some graphing and shapes. They're doing sorting and matching, review shapes and math matching. At the very end here, they're learning a little bit about concepts of time, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. And they're reviewing some weights, small and large in comparisons. They introduce money at the very end. And then they also go over a little bit of right and left. So it is very basic, but again, for me, that's totally fine for a, a five-year-old because again, I want them to enjoy this so much. Maybe it was simple, but they enjoyed it. They loved it. They always wanted to do it. And if that's how they feel about math, I'm happy with that. Now, level one. So this was last year for my little twins. Now they are in level one. So this is their piggy math and they love it. Level one, I'll show you the scope and sequence. If you want to screenshot this or just see if you can look at it with me. Um, let's see. We're counting again. We're going over circles and patterns. So probably the first six lessons are kind of reviews. And then we count bigger numbers and we go into place value. That is so important in lesson seven to um, when they go over place value because that is really gonna set the stage for how comfortable your kids are with numbers. This was huge for my daughter. We didn't understand that she didn't understand this and we got through halfway of level two and I had to take her all the way back to the beginning of level one to go over place value again. Um, introducing the plus and equal um, symbols. They go over addition plus one. Um, writing and adding numbers, introducing the days of the week. They do um, vertical and horizontal math problems, which I love because a lot of books will just do the horizontal problems. Let's see, two by two. So there's counting by twos, number families, addition to 10. Counting by 10, counting groups 
solving for an unknown, tally marks, counting by fives. They go into telling time, simple fractions. And, and by simple fractions, it's basically what is a half, what is a quarter, subtraction minus one, and then we do some review. So review of addition, review skip counting, twos and fives, tally marks, and that's what you're gonna get in level one. You're, you're always working on writing your letters, or um, numbers, sorry, which I think is great practice because mine will still write their numbers backwards. You can see right here, she, these are my six-year-olds, uh, did a two like that and a three like that. And let's see, so they're just, they're just going over some basic counting and again, they really, really enjoy these books. I'm trying to get uh, comfortable here. This is probably um, color the rectangles green, the circles yellows, counting and writing the numbers. And then we're tracing or writing numbers some more. Then we're answering questions about the shapes. Some more addition. Here's some more. Now we're about halfway through the book and we have some addition problems, horizontal and vertical. More addition and counting by tens. We have some uh, clocks down there at the bottom. So you're gonna be matching the clocks. Here's some of the fraction work right here. So you're gonna tell which one is a half, you know, a true half. Let's see, and then towards the end, there's some color by numbers and you're also going over place value. So, you know, for the number 29, how many ones are there and how many tens, just so that they, they can understand the breakdown of numbers. So that is level one. And then finally, level two is their doggy math or puppy math. So in this one, let's take a quick look at the scope and sequence of this one. We're doing more place value. I'll hold it here if you wanna take a screenshot of that. This is also available on their Masterbooks um, website. Place value, so now we're doing subtraction, writing numbers, simple fractions, introducing word problems, skip counting, using dimes and nickels and minutes on the clock. Um, we're adding double digit um, plus double digit. Let's see, we're introducing measurement, inches, feet, Introducing perimeter, telling time to the minute, more subtraction work, carrying, so they're gonna work on carrying, and borrowing, and regrouping. We're gonna go over uh, more in depth of dollars and cents and all, you know, money, uh, thermometers and other gauges. Now we're going into graphs, bar graphs and line graphs, uh, pounds and ounces, gallons, quarts, pints, cups. Now we're adding money, and now we're subtracting money and making change. Uh, more time measurements, and then we're going into review of the thousands place, um, adding, subtracting, double digits, more money, time, and temperature. So you can see the level of difficulty kind of grow here with level two. And that's why I said, I believe by level three, it definitely gets more in depth and more challenging, but you can really see, and I'll show you inside this book. Uh, actually, let me just show you that real quick. So they're still doing, they're still writing their numbers here. And, they're, and this is the very, very beginning. So they're reviewing shapes and they're doing super basic subtraction, but then they're going into money you know, counting dimes, and they're doing more word problems here. And, and here's where they're going over the perimeter of shapes, writing numbers. They'll need to draw their fractions. Then we get into the thermometer work and the graphs. And you can see up here where they're adding money and doing more clockwork. And now they're subtracting money, making change. 
So you can see yourself that even from this book, you can see it's very gentle. It's very simple. It's just fun and really gets them excited about their numbers. This one, um, still, you know, fairly simple, but by about halfway through, it's really picking up. You're still getting that basic foundation of math, but I feel by level two, you're really starting to build faster and that's going to really prepare you for levels three, four, five, and six. I hope this was helpful for you and let me know if you are using master books math as well and how it's going for you, what level they're in, how old are they. Um, I would love to chat about that with you and I will see you next time. Don't forget to watch for my next video because um, I'm doing a whole series of what we're using for our curriculum and I will chat with you next time. Bye.